guys, welcome. And when I say welcome, the emphasis is on come to horrible decisions, baby. And I'm really excited because we have a guest that we've been wanting to have on that a lot of you have sent in. But before we get to him, let me tell y'all who a bitch is because I'm that bitch. I'm your girl, Mandy B, a.k.a. Pet the Stallion, a.k.a. Full Court Pumps, a.k.a. Dead Bitch. Hi, I'm Wheezy. Welcome to another episode of Horrible Decisions. We're here shooting in New York. You know, we've been virtual. We've been in L.A. We've we been in Vegas. All. We've been doing a lot. So finally, we're back in the city, and we're sitting next to a man that I know from one <laughs> clip. <laughs> who was the interviewer? Was that the super duper humble guy? Mm -hmm. Who we actually had on. Who really, your clip, to me, made that... Damn, I feel like everybody found him from that clip. So it was so cool to see the guy behind the clip. Everybody, everybody literally tagged you. And we'll get into also that clip later. Don't even want to share what it is Phenomenal right now. Phenomenal clip. That, listen. Wait, what do you mean don't share what it is? No, because it's, did you, did you not read the outline? I got the outline. We going. don't need to not say no, it. I want to get into it, but I want to know how New York was. Let well, me know. What's your name? Let's Let me know. We have the naked trumpeter in the building, y'all. We have the naked trumpeter. <laughs> AKA Eli, we're gonna go be, be we gonna go back and forth with it. We're gonna go back and forth with it. Because you got clothes on today. That's what you said. I mean, if you call me naked trumpet, I mean I can get undressed, but I don't know. See that, what I mean? I okay, so we got Eli this, in the building. Okay. I don't know if we can post this on YouTube if okay. you don't have clothes. I'll, I'll keep my clothes on um, you have shorts on? <laughs> he said I'm free balling. We could go for nipple. I am but anyway, go free balling. Ahead. Um so before I guess we start and get into it. Uh, how has New York been treating you? Is good? Well, listen, New York always treats me lovely. Always Ooh. treats me lovely. It's, it's a great place to be. Why, um, what's so good about it? How I treat you lovely? Um. <laughs> <laughs> so about the physical touch moment you know, we made you stop saying. You know, so what I find is like, so you all know how you look. And sometimes you get to be objectified for you have a large this or you have a small that. So last night I just um, was able to touch someone everywhere on their body and... Um, Kind of like the love handles, the fupa, the back of the calves, the back of the knee, the feet, um, like the turkey wings, all the parts that most people just What's avoid. What's a turkey wing? The, the, when oh, you, when, yeah. When, when you're flying. You, when you, oh, yeah, oh, I got when that right when I but, but it doesn't matter how how big or small you are. But as far as touch, most people touch where touch you where? Tits, ass, you're right. So when someone touches your entire body, it, it's a somatic experience. So it brings you out of your head. And Ooh. then you have to think about, you don't always want to be objectified. You don't want to be, oh, I have a big ass, so just touch me there. So a lot of times when people interact with each other, they're only touching certain spots. Mm. So when someone touches you in a place that you may be uncomfortable if they do it in a way that you can tell, like, this motherfucker likes this, it makes you feel a way. Wow. Well, what's crazy, too, is the things that you do sexually don't always involve penetration, yes. hands, or toys at all. The naked trumpeter. You actually really play the trumpet. I actually have it. You have the trumpet. Yeah, I, love, oh, I would. I would tell you. Pussy. I ain't gonna hold you. I would tell you to, to to grab the trumpet. The problem is, I've seen where you have placed that trumpet, and so I want to talk Jesus. about that. You have more than one. <laughs> That's why I'm like, not I clean your, my trumpet. Keep the is trumpet in the trumpet? case. Yes, it's my personal home, but keep, I claim my trumpet. Keep the trumpet in the case, sir. That, that's, that. I do want to know. So you play the trumpet. I do. And you play the trumpet on, it's not like you just play it at a club, right? You play the trumpet on other things. Can you please share the first time you pulled the trumpet out in a sexual place and what you do with your trumpet and why? <laughs> so listen, um, the funny, I have to tell the story this way. Um, yes. You, it, it, the, contextually, it wasn't my idea. It wasn't. Oh, um, I was talking to my mother and my mother is a dom. She's uh, into sex work. Um, so she was like, hey, have you ever thought about putting your trumpet on the ladies? And I was like, no, why would I do that? And she was like, well, is there anything that you do as a trumpet player that enhances you sexually? And I was like, yeah, a lot of stuff. And she was like, well, put the trumpet there and let me know how it goes. So I was like, all right, Ma, I'll do that. Is she a musician too? No, nah, she's, no. She's, she's a dom. Well, she's I mean, a dom. She, I mean, she's, well, I know, she, she played play violin. Play she, she played violin. She played piano, but she's not actively a musician at this point. And so I did it uh, in a session, and I was like, and I, I asked her, she liked. She's like, it felt like a vibrator, but it was just different. And so uh, musically, when you give give someone a sound bath, certain frequencies actually respond to your body a certain way. So when I put it over your vulva, it is the, the equivalent of a vibrator. Do you consider it a sound bath? It is. Um, even when I play trumpet for myself, I'm tuning my body with the music. It's like saying ohm mm -hmm. when you chant, you're tuning yourself. But imagine me doing like this. It's the same thing, it's a vibrator. 
So mm-hmm. whether I turn my mouth into a vibrator, I turn the trumpet into a vibrator. If you like vibration, you're gonna enjoy what it. What song gives the best response on the pussy? It's not really a song. It's more of a tongue emotion. Well, he thought you was playing America the Beautiful. No, I said that. Oh, <laughs> what? It was just a guess. Is, is there a song? It was actually Daniel Caesar get you. That's that. that that's oh. what I was playing. That's what I, I was actually playing. You know yeah. what's crazy? That is like one of my favorite records to fuck to mm-hmm. of all time. I had to do a sex playlist and get you by Daniel Caesar, even though I know people tried to cancel him. Is one of why like, did people try to cancel? He was uh, because he talked about something about black women. He was sticking up for somebody online, but he's canceled. Like nobody fucks with Daniel Caesar anymore, and it sucks. But I really like that song. I like everything he does, oh. and I told you no one's really canceled. Maybe they just don't I like don't. any of his other shit. No, he has some good shit. His music is really fucking How did good. He just get ca- I, bro. I he was canceled during I uh, get the back pandemic. On yeah. Speaking yeah. of Twitter, went on yours, and that was a really fun hole I fell in for thirty minutes. Wow, you spent 30 minutes of my time. I just Your couldn't page, stop. You could stay I, was, that long on. I was on the phone with someone I'm dating, and I was, uh, I just only knew your clips. So I just wanted to look, and, you know, we always check out our guests before an episode. I was like, damn, this Trump shit is crazy. And then I kept going and going, and I think that you had probably the widest range of, like, hitting everything in sex work <laughs> on a Twitter that you could possibly have as a man. <sighs> yeah. It's, what it is. It's, I'm sorry, I don't know your pronouns. No, no, you no. Have, I, it's you they do them. have that. It's they them. Um, but for me, it's... Like I tell people, I don't I don't have a persona. It's like the naked trumpeter is just. I'm telling you that I'm a nudist that plays trumpet. That's it. Because you um, do have some where you literally are just standing naked playing your trumpet too, yeah. and mm-hmm. there's not another person involved in the video. Not at all. Right. And what you like? So you said um, "Get You" was one of your favorite songs to have sex to. Yes. Think about it this way: um, attention is something that we all seek. Being humanized. So if I'm giving you eye contact and I'm playing a song for you, mm-hmm. and I you recognize the time it took for me to actually do that. You recognize the planning that it took the execution. So it's attentive, it's being attentive. In your everyday life, even if you're dating somebody, dealing with somebody, how often is someone actually planning and executing something for you where you all you have to do is show up? Right. So in my sessions, that's what it is. That's basically what it is. It's a conversation of what do you like? What are your yeses, your noes? What are your fantasies? What things actually turn you on? And half of them aren't sexual. It's like most of the time when you think about. Do you find that that takes more effort? No. If they're non-sexual, I mean. So, no. no. It's be, it seems think, like sex could be easier, I feel like, in sex work. Like, if I had to do girlfriend experience type shit, I feel like I'd be more stressed out than just having to have sex. At the end of the day, you want to be humanized. You know, sex is, is secondary. Mm-hmm. Connection is the first thing that's needed. Mm-hmm. So, let's say if I wanted to take both of y'all on a date. I have to convince you that I see you as a human first. You're used to somebody like, oh, she got a fat ass. So like you are, she, she knows what she looks like. You know what you look like. You know, oh, I got this and this. So if I tell you that, you're like, okay, oh, I, I know, I know. Look like I put on this outfit. I put on the makeup, the earrings. Mm-hmm. So when you're able to see somebody's human, it's just their character. It's not what they look like. And so for me, regardless of what we're doing, when I do that with you, you're open to everything. The way you get to have sex on the first date is seeing someone as a human, not seeing them as anything beyond that, not objectifying them, but making them feel felt and seen and heard. And when you could do that. Everything that you could think that you possibly want to do, you're open to. I think that's a very mature way to view it. Only because, like, I do think now in dating, everything is so instant um, that I don't think that many people do humanize the people they date. They objectify first. They look They look first, right? Mm-hmm. So they go after what either makes their dick hard or what make as a woman, what makes them wet. Like, I think we are still very visual creatures. And I think because of social media and because of technology, it's removed people from knowing how to communicate like just humanly and look first. I'll say even with my ex, like the best thing that I think that made him number one in our sex was actually how he used to stretch me after. That was something that I had never really gotten from another partner, like someone really taking care of, I know I just fucked the God shit out of you. Let me make sure that you can still move during the day. So let me, Open up your hips more. Let me make sure your back isn't hurt. Cause but that's a you know form what I mean? of, like, of someone seeing you as a human. It's a form of a, somebody being attentive. Right, and I think that's what I'm saying. For mm. the most part, I don't think men are that thoughtful. So I think how, how you said the experience that you had with someone where you where you gave you know intimacy to every part of their body, mm-hmm. a lot of women don't get that treatment. And you know that, because that's why that was very special to that person to even be able to feel that. Even just cuddling. I love cuddling. The, the thing about it, think about this. <laughs> if your only all. value is the food that you can cook and your body, that means I only like you for two things. 
has nothing to do with you as a human. Mm. If the only time I call you is when I want to get inside your body, you you, you recognize what and that is. Collard green. When when having sessions, do you ever have virtual sessions that turn into non sexual? And when they are virtual, how, what does that look like? Because in person, it's really easy to give, um, you know, show intimacy in ways that may not be like touching genitalia. But what about when they're virtual sessions? Are we touching right now? Don't try to fuck me with your eyes. I'm, I'm asking you a question. I'm being serious. Are, seriously, are we touching right now? No. How do you feel about the conversation so far? I mean, I'm enjoying the conversation, but it's a genre that I like to speak about. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying, how do you feel about the conversation? I'm being serious. Oh? The oh. conversation with all three of us? I feel <laughs> splendid about it. Right. No one else in the room matters. I'm talking to you. I know, but I'm saying like... Ooh, I like the, I like I like the redness of your cheeks. I like Look, that. oh yeah, no. You are you are getting a little frazzled. <laughs> Bitch, I don't get frazzled. Okay, all right. I was asking something really specific. And I'm asking that because one of the only things that I've ever heard a Dom or someone that has sessions virtually do was ignore sessions. And I thought it was so crazy. It was Carmen Light, uh Lisa Splitson. We've had her on years and years ago. But when she talked about that, she was like People loved it. People felt like I really catered to their needs by that. And it's ironic because you're being ignored. I have a question. What do you like to be called? My name? Like Wheezy. Outside of that. Oh, like a pet name? Anything that you like to be called. Um, Gila, which is my first name. But How, how do you like to be touched? Uh, it depends. Okay. Could be soft, could be hard. Like I vary. Tell me something I can't guess about you. Mmm... Something you couldn't guess. I'm introverted. Interesting. I believe you. I was going to say she can't eat baked mac and cheese. <laughs> you ain't know that, did you? A lot of black people are like this. <laughs> she allergic to eggs. Difficult bitch to go out to eat with, baby. Actually, no. You wouldn't have known that, huh? It's, it's actually easy to go out to eat with somebody. You find you're you, interacting is so it go back to humanness. You figure out what the person likes they don't like. Mm -hmm. You don't do things they don't like. You do things that they're interested in that you mutually enjoy and you figure out their their blueprint. And if it's difficult, shouldn't be hanging with that motherfucker. I'm gonna be real. Yeah. You ever find that sometimes people have like very simple yeses and nos and you feel like they're the biggest thing in the world? That's somebody you really can't be hanging with. Like mm. whenever I notice that when someone's like, what I like is very simple, but it's hard for me to do just even friendships platonically. I'm like, this just isn't for me. Oh it's yeah, I do me. that with time. If I'm around someone who's just constantly always late, it, I just let them know this does this does not work for me, and it like will build resentment. I do not like people that play with my time, and I've shared that with my partner. Like I've shared that with my 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 uh, my co-host. I've shared that with just about everybody in my life. That time is one thing I do not play with, and I do not take lightly. And so if it's if if it's someone who is just constantly always going to show up or be late slow sl slowly they'll start being removed out of my life like i'm very i'm very quick to tell people like that's a big thing for but me but that goes to being intentional but that's what i'm saying and again treating me like a human if it's one thing that you know i absolutely hate to me i i literally draw the line and look at it as a sign of either disrespect or that you just don't give a fuck about me because i've vocally i, I vocalized that this is something that drives me crazy and that i do not like and so if you don't even try to be on time for me, then that's how I take it and that's how I perceive it. And then you're, you know, you gotta go. I think I'm very big now with vocalizing the things that bother me. Um, I did that with my last relationship and I've been learning how to like create boundaries as well. But to me, vocalizing the things that you don't like when you're in a relationship and you see that the person that you are with mm -hmm. is not even attempting to make up to not do the things that you don't like, to me then that person has very little reverence for you. And that's just how I perceive I, it. I, I agree. You agree with that? Well, so in virtual sessions to finish up that, that answer, it's more about what you like. And it's the same thing, because this is, this is we're in space, mm -hmm. but because I'm not touching you, I look at it as just virtual. It's more about mm -hmm. just connecting to you as a human. And in space is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Giving you agency to say yes or no, giving you, letting you know that I'll do anything that you want me to other, other than my hard limits. And I'll tell you what that is. So there's always setting the stage to worship the person that you're in front of. So I look at connecting as a form of devotion because we do everything for a God that we've never met. That's a great word. I use, I've been using that a lot lately through meditation and stuff, devotion. Like I've been using that a lot. And I think that 
when we're using words like that, sometimes it feels real serious. But like at the same time, it's a simple way of telling someone that you are taking them serious. You know what I mean? Like I used to associate words like devotion or body worship. That's the first time I would start using worship in a sexual way. Right. And I would associate that with like, oh, this feels like very commitment and very serious. But I do like the intention behind sexual relationships. Like I, I must say, like even through casualty, I've, I've had experiences like that with this whole podcast. Like I've always had very good foundation built with the people that I've had sex with. And I think that when meeting sex workers, it's always so interesting to me when someone is a little more intellectual because I know some sex workers that are like, oh, girl, threw some pussy at him. He paid me whatever. I'm out. And then it, making just as much money or respected the same way as the sex worker that's sending you a checklist before they meet up with you. So it's just interesting to meet different people and 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 see what that's like, which is kind of crazy that we're even talking about this with you, considering the first video I saw of you is you blowing a trumpet into someone's pussy. The next one is the shower. And I'm, here we are. I, I did want to ask about you. Love and respect. I, I did want to ask you, too, because, again, you go down the rabbit hole of your Twitter. It doesn't seem like much is off limits. So what are your hard limits? <sighs> wow. So is the list long or short? It's actually short. I I I, I figured. I'm not in the race play. Um, oh good. wow! You know I was gonna ask you that. Yeah, I'm not in the race. Good. Play. That was my first question. Not good. Really. Um, so I, I try to explain this to people. I I love women of color, specifically black women. I I just do. Um, I don't want to be called the N word. I don't want to be some. I'm not into Queen of Spades. I don't want to be your BBC. Like that's not my mm, thing. I hate that term, um, but we joke about it. But I actually we do. It, I mean, it's, it's I, black people like saying it. BBC is weird to me. I like it. Wait, but do you? <sighs> because I search it because I don't want to see but white. Not, I don't want to see white. You want their BBC? We, we literally talked about it though. Like when you put in white cock or big cock, a lot of it's gonna right, come but you're up not as white. Say calling a a man. Oh your, no, I, I don't vocalize it, but I search weird. it. Yeah, I don't have to say BBC. I've only been with black men. So, like, to me, that word, but when I'm searching it online, I absolutely do search that word because that's what I want to see. Right. I mean, like, you see, he's saying I don't want to be called that. Oh. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, so. It's a thing to if, be called if, BBC? If, yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah listen. I don't know. Like, that does not sound sexy. That's what Girl, I'm we have talked about that so much. But to be called BBC, listen. I, Bro, I know people what do it the to word me all the I, time. I, I, I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, there are certain people that are, are I, I want to be gentle on this. Talk about white people, and, fuck them. Oh, yeah, we talk about cracks all the time. I, 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 wow. See, you know, listen. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. In spaces, we very in, fuck white people in, in sex positive spaces, this is what you'll see. We're having a conversation. I was at Exotica. Which a, one? Uh, in D.C. A white lady comes up, interrupts me having a conversation. She sees me talking to a group of black women. Of course she did. Interrupts me. is like, it's time for you to spank me. So I was like, you know what? I said, I'm going to indulge her. But the way that I did it, all the black women was like, yeah, get her. They was like, get her. Because <laughs> oh, they, 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 they can see it. They was like, right. get her. And, but the way they move is so, such an entitlement. And it's such a turnoff. Women of color don't act like that. You could be madly attracted to me. But the way you approach me is still from a place of self-respect right. and respect for my humanness. Uh, I was at a space changing clothes, and that's why lady was like, "Damn, the BBC's here." No, she oh, didn't. No, yeah. she didn't. And I'm like, first of all, you're never going to feel it. However, ill, gross, right? Because you literally just did something I'm not into. So race play, I don't, I don't want, I don't want blood. Uh, okay. Now I say I'm into water sports because, like, what I what I do enjoy is when a lady squirts all over me. That whether it's on she's sitting on my face, whether however it happens. You say it, squirt all over me anywhere, don't but not. I'm, what about golden showers? Eh, I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. Okay. I mean, because I, I recognize like things are things. I I despise semen other than my own. Really you despise semen. semen. I used to, and now other, I, I no, be like, what is it? Is it the look? Um, is it the, no, no, no. the, the like? You know, I drink a lot of water. I ate a shitload of fruits and vegetables. And you vegan. Yeah. Is it clear? It's, no, it's not. That's what she not, just said not, on, on, no. a, on a on a previous episode. So <laughs> I, I know what it tastes like because I taste my own all the time. So like I jokingly said mumble salt sweet on, on the interview, but I was being just silly and facetious. However, not everybody takes that like you know, you you all I've have, had it bad listen, before. Exactly. I've had I've had bad come so A lot like, of the yo, men I've dated have been super fit. Yes. And yeah, that something. was it. Yeah. Like yeah. men that are doing like hella protein creatine like all that extra shit i'm like yo are you sure you're not on steroids because this can't be real that's how bad it's weed smokers terrible yeah, yeah. i will say yeah vegan 
Definitely the best I've ever tasted. Hate to admit it because I am not a plant based girl. But <laughs> they do be having. Yo, listen. Even vegan women even taste better. I know. It, it's. Li- li- I was talking I, about both. Oh, listen. It is a. It. It is. It is. It's really because of the the acidicness of what we eat. Because mm-hmm. you end up tasting like salt. It ends up being like having a different flavor. Even you, like if you don't drink water, what I, happens to your urine? Oh yeah, same it, thing. It, it turns. I've yellow, been learning a orange. little bit with my own self, like with tasting right before, especially because like with having new partners, you know, the first time you want to be like perfect. So like sometimes, it, I definitely I'll cut red meat off right before I know I got a date. But I heavy up the fruits, like, I, and really the water is the main difference. I think water over even the water, meat for me. water is a, a big thing. Water is a big thing for me. Women that eat an uh, excessive amount of shrimp, you you can tell, and it's like really, yeah. Well, I mean, I I'm I allergic, did, so well, yeah. And I did wait. What happened? Oh yeah, you it could come through the pussy. Wait, but no, what happens to you? It makes me nauseous. I, I don't yeah. I don't swallow, but it makes you me eat nauseous. the pussy and you're like, it, is it shellfish it, or just shrimp? It came no, just right shrimp. out the trunk. Oh, just shrimp. It, it has been that in in. It, she ate, she admittedly likes I mean she ate a lot of and we were shooting together and I was like um, my tongue's a little tingly and and she like she spent a whole week tearing down I said this so, I, I date Muslims often oh, sweet um, but no I like bacon so when I'm with them when I know I'm like engaging in, in sex with someone um, that's Muslim I have to stop eating bacon because they taste it through the puss they taste it through the puss I didn't think it was puss. real they sure and, do until I had oh, the he experience knew. he knows yeah. he like them greens had bacon for the holidays, didn't they? I was like, damn, they sure did. They sure did. Um, but I did want to get into <laughs> our so vanilla weak. shit. That's crazy. Because this is where I want to know just how strange, how kinky things have gotten around you. I found an article oh, from mirror.co.uk um, about a man who is in love with balloons. Um, a man who is attracted to objects has dished the details of his relationship with multiple balloons. Akash, who's 28, is so besotted with his collection of inflatable partners that he could burst, literally. The romantic <laughs> identifies as objectum sexual, which means he is sexually attracted to inanimate objects. Um, he lives in Mumbai, India, and shares a bed with the, the balloons every night and says that they also enjoy a physical relationship. I like their presence and warmth. Oh and share intimate feelings with my balloons and vice versa. I make out with my balloons. When we're in love, you spend a lot of time together and accept all kinds of flaws. Every morning, I wake up by saying good morning and giving a kiss to my balloons (laughs) that sleep beside me and vice versa. When they become inflated, I think that's when they're born. I can talk to them, take them shopping, and for a walk in the garden. They do talk me through dreams and telepathy. So. Talk me through telepathy? Yes. It's nuts. I don't know what the conversation is, y'all. Oh, shit. Listen. Okay, so you're laughing like you probably have not heard of this. Because I was going like to ask. met a no, balloon no, man. No, no, I was going to ask, have you met someone that okay. has been in Go a ahead. relationship? Go ahead. Now we're ready for the weird This is what I'm talking about. I know you know people. So okay, um, has anyone been in love with inanimate objects before? Uh, <laughs> wow, the one on your leg? Okay, so... <laughs> Oh man, Th- listen. This this is interesting for me to talk about um, because I recognize it's different for me. Um, but I feel that way about my trumpet. It, it, but it's not not in the sense of it talks to me like okay. not not like not that. But in the sense of you can take uh, it on walks. Well, I have it. I walk. It's it's literally with me more than people are. Um, but mm. it's more it's more of a self love thing. Like when I play trumpet, it it is me um, tuning myself. It is me expressing how I feel through music. So mm-hmm. it's a part of me. When I you blow love into it. Trumpet. Yes, it is, brings, is that, that's that when br- it actually br- produces life. Do you I'm, feel a little uh-huh. asphyxiation, like a little? I So I'm doing that with my <laughs> collar right now. So that's why, one of the reasons why I wear a collar, because it's a slight uh, like blood choke. If it, I'm, I'm, I'm over here like fucking myself right now. Forgive me. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I do like Now I'm my, glad I didn't but, let but you my, bring your trumpet oh, to sit over here with you. But listen, don't <laughs> I don't be like, you, is this your girlfriend? <laughs> so I ironically if if you if you subscribe to my OnlyFans, you will see some pictures where I'm doing some things with my trumpet that you might be like, eh. Like I didn't so, know. Like what? No, like it can't make noise no more. How about this? <laughs> I, I to be honest with you, you're just gonna have to subscribe. I'm gonna leave oh, it there. Oh man. Now, that's why I'm like Oh shit! You you actually bought something out of it. I'm like that is actually Wait, my. So, thing. You, so you were laughing because you understood. Or do yeah, you I put do. something in? 
Or is it? Uh, you go, listen, I'm, <laughs> if you subscribe to my OnlyFans. How much is it? How have you made this? out with your trumpet outside of blowing it? Like so, so you might actually have an affair with an inanimate object. And y'all, this is wild because you laughing and you're like, "Oh shit, she talking about me." Maybe at, you're objectum sexual. At you got to add that to That's, your to it, your it bio. Actually, I've known this all of my life. So any woman that has ever dated any person that's ever dated me recognizes this. And I, I'm honest, I'm going to touch my trumpet more than I'll probably touch you. And it's nothing to do with wow. lack of desire for you. Um, it's like an oral fixation. I enjoy playing the trumpet. I enjoy the blowing of it. Everything about it gives me like excitement. So um, it's it's very much a part of me. I'm playing since I was 13. I'm 41. So I get this. So I was just why I was laughing. I was laughing. Yeah, like, no, yeah. that's why you're laughing because you like. I don't well, talk and, to and it I though. Even, like it doesn't talk to me. To draw it, like it doesn't that. help me through relational you ain't problems. You never talk to it. Not necessarily. Do you drink or do drugs? First of all, I've taken Tylenol. Yes, I do drugs. Oh, oh mushrooms. So, like, uh, he said pharmaceutical. Now, plant medicine. Oh, mushrooms. So you had never get the mushroom, look at that trumpet, and been like, it's me and you for life. <laughs> no, I've never. No, I, I have. We're, we're not. We're not. Now, there. I do know that you can uh, be aroused without getting hard. You can yes. have an orgasm without shooting out. Does your trumpet give you, like, sexual feelings? <laughs> sexual not, healing? Not in that sense. In a vibratory sense, yes. Okay. Um. The same way I'm doing it, making my lips vibrate. It's very somatic. It brings you out of your head and into your body. It's the it's it's the diaphragmic breathing. So it's like doing meditation, med meditative breathing. Do you know mm. about the breathing? How um, with deep breathing you can release DMT into the brain? Yes, and you can also have an orgasm. Right. So just with, with how you breathe with breath play. So one of my teachers, um, two of my teachers, grand teacher. Uh, Amina That's Peterson. That's what you made me think of. That's why I brought it up. My grand teacher, Amina Peterson. Um, and then my teacher, uh, Touched by Jax, um, they both, we they, they, we do breath work. And they, we've been talking about it. Um, but orgasm can come from breath. So when I'm playing trumpet, when people see me smoking, when you smokers are doing meditative breathing, they're going slow, meaningful breaths. They're filling up their entire lungs and they're blowing it We're out poison, slowly. But yes. Regardless of that, that's, that's neither here nor there. But they're doing it. The breath is still meditative. So when I'm playing trumpet, I'm doing that ah. plus one. So playing like if, if you know anything about breath of fire, different ways to breathe, I'm doing that while I'm playing trumpet. So the the Kim, like you saying DMT, I'm that's actually part of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Those deep, intense breathings and then blowing out all the carbon dioxide of your body, it has a very relaxing effect on the body. So the same way you get excited about a date you're gonna go on, and then you go on the date. That's I'm getting dopamine, mm -hmm. oxytocin just from playing the trumpet. Because I'm excited about the thing. I'm excited about the plane. And then when I'm playing, I'm actually giving myself this boost. So, yes, I can be aroused. But as far as orgasm, wow. um, the difference between ejaculation and orgasm is ejaculation is the end of the erection. Orgasm, when your legs start shaking and you're a male body person, like, that's an orgasm. You're having one. You just don't recognize that's what's happening while you're having sex. When you start that, that little weird-ass pump, you're like, how did that's you go from a steady I rhythm to that weirdness? That's an orgasm. Or wow. arousal can be when you drink water or something, you're like, ah. Oh. I'm like, an explosion of, of joy is an orgasm, but we just centralize it to our genitalia and we don't recognize. Like, I have a scene uh, with Badass A.J. Jones. That's interesting you I'm, say that because that's very to me, interesting. I, I like wouldn't that. describe orgasm that way. I feel like orgasm has a peak and climax. So enjoying something like a drink, I guess I guess because like I'm getting there and then I'm going back down, but like. A burst of joy from something that you do. Uh-huh. And then it, it dissipates. So you're right. Orgasm is kind of they peak and then they right. come off. So when you eat your favorite food, and you're like, oh, shit. How is that any different from when you're rubbing one out? And mm. you get that, oh. Maybe the intensity, I guess. Not just intensity. It's the location of it. But I promise you, there's videos where I'm literally rubbing a lady's calf and she's squirting all over herself. So orgasm doesn't have to be centralized. On the calf? The calves. It doesn't the have to be centralized to your genitalia. So we experience she, orgasm. Wait, wait, wait. There's no touching of the puss. You are rubbing the her scene, calf. The scene Hold is on my OnlyFans. You're I rubbing her calf, and she is just squirting from her calf being rubbed. Now that's water sports. That was pee. I ain't going to hold you. Yeah, that might <laughs> be. That, it, it's squirt, not pee. No, it's squirt. Wow. You, I ain't going to hold you. I'm going to subscribe tonight. I, 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 have, I just added some more uh, coins. I have flogged people, and, <laughs> and they, they've squirted, but not just on the, the vulva, on the buttocks. It's because orgasm that is, is the buildup, is a buildup of many things. But see, that's because... Calves is different because your ass, like, being spanked, I feel it in my pussy. I feel a little, it reaches it somehow. Yeah. That's localized. But the calves, that's talent. Now you deserve a flower. Wow. It's, it's, 
I pro- I, if you ever had a session with me, the way you would feel after it is different than the way you would feel from somebody having sex with Let's you. give him a seuss. But, it's, it's, not, but it's, not, it's not even just that. So, I mean, my pussy do be getting wet when I get massages. And that's it a do. good thing. It do. But as soon as your partner puts his penis inside you, you're worried about if they had fun. What I'm going to do to you, you're not worried about if I have fun. You're fo- so focused on yourself. You can get into a space where your body is so sensitive where I could do like this. And you're like, oh, shit. That's good if you can do that to people that are pleasers because I am one. Yeah. And I've realized that sometimes it's almost difficult for me when having sex with pleasers because we're almost both racing and we can't relax. And I think a lot of people need to unlearn that. I'm, I've actually learned that recently. Um, I was sleeping with someone that was such a pleaser and so was I. And we were both too... Competing at pleasing each other. Yeah. Not competing more than like we couldn't relax or enjoy until the other person did. So now it was almost like That's, I almost faked it just so oh, wow. I, he could get to it so that I could get to I it. I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast. No, <laughs> I mean, like it, we, we laughed about it okay. and, and like learned about that, too. And he was like, yeah, I just can't like I just I need to get off of you getting off. I'm like, I know. So what should we do? Just lie? Like. Um, I do want to get back into DMT because I haven't really sat with someone that I can have a conversation with that with about that okay. with on horrible, but I've been having many convos about it. So I've had DMT, I've smoked it, um, and most people know it, it's a hallucinogen, kind of like in that ayahuasca ish family, right? But learned about Kundalini through Liz Goldwyn, who we've had on the show, who took me to the yoga class, who taught okay. me about breath work and meditation. Mm-hmm. Then I learned about DMT being released through a lot of breath work. And I had no idea that DMT was something that your own brain can release. And when I did it for an hour, so apparently like it's almost, they compare it to the feeling of heroin. Like when your, when your brain can get there, have you been able to reach it? It took me like, it took me way too long. So, um, when you, you probably don't watch, if you ever see me do yoga on my Instagram lives, that's what I'm doing. It takes me about 45 minutes. I'm using motion and breath. Um, but another thing that happens when you go to the gym and work out real hard and you go to sleep and have a dream, DMT is when you're dreaming. You say it's a hallucination, but your body creates a lot of time. When you're smoke, the smoking, I'm saying the hallucinogen. Yeah, but when your body creates, you can create it if you're just working out. Mm. Because when you're, you're talking about breathing, when you're working out intentionally, you're generally you're focused on your breath. But um, when you're dreaming, that's DMT. Mm. You can create it through many different things. So, but physical exertion is one way. Meditation is another way. But when you do it, it's a, it's a beautiful experience. Think about all the chemicals you create in your body right now. You're mm-hmm. your own perfect drug factory. When you're excited about something, it's dopamine. When you start to bomb with somebody, it's oxytocin. And nobody has to touch you to release that in your body. Right. Um, and that's what I was talking about being attentive. But DMT is a fire thing because of the way it makes your brain fire and what it does to the ego and how you can be like, damn, I'm not alone in this crazy space. Also, it, oh, it crack, kind of cracks open what you believe to be possible. And um, it puts you in a different space, like cycles of mushrooms. It puts you in a whole different space after you do it. You're like, shit, I feel connected to everything I and everybody. It. Yeah. So. It really, it really. Now, speaking <laughs> of connections, oh, speaking geez. of kinkstruments as well, we're going to get into our hors d'oeuvre because you are someone as well who enjoys anal play. I do. On yourself. Mm-hmm. And so we were lucky. It took us years to get someone to come on here and talk about them enjoying being pegged. Um, but you gladly sit on dildos on your page as well. Mm-hmm. And so I would love for you to give us a sex tip about anal toys um, and pegging for men. One of the things is um, recognizing it doesn't challenge your masculinity. Mm. Um, Tell them again. Our G spot. It's inside your anus. It's there. <clears throat> God did that because he got a sense of humor, y'all. Um, and it's the same thing if, if someone is digitally penetrating you. Like, I mean, can you go to the top and pop that? Like, can you touch the G spot? So it's the same thing. Recognizing that you can have the most amount of pleasure you've ever had in your life with just one finger in your rectum, and it literally takes less than ten seconds wow. to milk a prostate. As soon as you hit, it, it's like, oh my god. Um, but the biggest thing is, I would say, get a dilator. Okay. It's one of the best toys, and it's small. Starts off real small, and it's a balloon. It expands. That actually allowed for me is the easiest way to take something in your in your rectum. Mm. Um, a dilator. Yeah, the traditional like a, way. Like a like a anal training kit. That's exactly what it is. It's an anal what? dilator. Oh, okay. You just go to the sex store, and it's like I said, it's a little small, small bulb. You hit the power button, and it just slowly expands. Oh. What about, what about prep? Um, prepping, like literally preparing yourself for it. Prepping. Don't eat a lot of food that day. The day you want to actually <laughs> bottom, try not to eat. 
and go get you some fleet. Take the water, take the solution out and just put warm water in it, squirt it up in there, and then your lower bowel will be cleaned out. And once it comes out with nothing but water, you're ready. Now we're, we're going straight into kink tales from there. That's the horrible decision. Um, I would love to know what the conversation was. Did you want to be pegged the first time or did a woman say that she wanted to peg you? How did that oh, take place? Um, I was asking for it. You were asking so, for it. What you should know is this. When most people grow up trying to um, break into their, their parents' porn stash, my mom was a dom. So oh. she had dildos. She had anal beads. She had a lot of stuff. And so I was like, "What? what's this? Oh, <laughs> oh, why is there a dick? Oh, what do you do with it? <laughs> and, you know, at some point being a child, you don't recognize that you're a boy or a girl. You're just, just doing things. You're just figuring um, it out. You could take a bath with a whole boy and be 10 years old and have no idea that they're right. a boy and you're a girl. So I was in that space playing with dildos, putting things in my butt. Like, so I'm like, oh, I I didn't know that my G spot was there when I was doing it, but I was like, that shit feels great. Now, does your how mama know you? that you was out here how, putting? How old, how old were you when you were doing that? Oh man! Uh, and does your mama know that you was in there playing with her toys? Yes, yeah, she does. Oh she does. wow! She does. Okay, she does. Um, <laughs> I think when I found my first dildo, and I remember it was all black. Uh, it was about six inches, had no balls. Uh, <laughs> That's descriptive. Listen, I probably was somewhere between, we were living in D.C., so I was probably like 12 or 13. Somewhere between 11 and 13. Um, I had the time of my fucking life. I, I was, I, I, I couldn't figure out how to clean it off. I didn't, I didn't know about cleaning out. So it was, my first experience was pleasurable, but it was a lot of it like, messy. it was a lot of shit. Like, <laughs> like, 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 no pun intended. By enjoying that at that age, what do you, what, what's your sexuality today? pansexual i was gonna guess it's pansexual. all it's all humans so but that you, you have a pansexual vibe um part of so my mom had a girlfriend and a boyfriend mm -hmm. and two of my godmothers were trans women um and you so, grew up in dc yes so i grew up in a household where you were encouraged to be you just I love that. if you're having sex with somebody be honest don't lie about who and what you are but just be you know show up in the world how lucky so, are you yeah and yeah, at 41, people, this is a really crazy thing to hear. And as a black man, you hear like, so wow. many younger people saying like, oh, like I had a coming out party. And you're like, oh, like imagine the person that like, were you one of few amongst friends? Um, So this is the funny thing. Um, And I, I don't I don't like to dry snitch on anybody. I don't believe almost anybody's straight for many reasons. As a sex worker, we, we not. I don't even like to play this game. Like, I'm not gay, but I'm a dude. So how about you don't got to be gay, whatever you call yourself. You're here for pleasure, I'll give it to you. Um, and it's not even about sex, just dude touching the dude, man, man, on, man on male touch. But I think what it is is we our sexuality is based on who we will take home to our parents sometimes. In some cases, you may not actually be attracted to a woman. Very You're like, interesting. This woman doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. However, you may meet a woman and be like, she's so fucking fire. What would it be like to kiss them? So that's that's a different level of attraction, but it's more about their energy. But sexual attraction on an animal level, some things you're not attracted to. But there may be a day you're like, damn, I don't know how she got my pussy wet. What the hell just happened to me? Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to pleasure, if this was a dark room and you were getting your box ate and it felt great to you, once the light comes on, you're like, damn, it was a dog. Oh, shit, you'd be mad. <laughs> you'd be pissed. But the whole time before you knew, you was like, yo, they he was going to town. And it was, wasn't even a he. So pleasure is separate than sexuality mm. because dudes say they're straight but they go to glory holes and who's in the glory hole who's behind the wall it was created for men it wasn't it wasn't created for male on female right it was created to give you amnesty to put your dick through a hole and get it sucked and be like oh i didn't know who it was you knew who it was <laughs> so sexualities and pleasure you know they can be separated because you don't have to quote unquote be attracted to a male but you'll still use his mouth You'll still use his asshole. And that, that's a I've pleasure based thing. I've that's had this conversation about with people. jail a lot. I've had this conversation with people who are very much and identify as straight, but those are things that, yeah, they'll allow because it, maybe it feels good or whatever the case may be. I was at a photo shoot, Mandy, and let me just say this. The straight men talked more about my penis than the ladies that were there. But do you also think that that's a, a trained thing, knowing that even in porn, and we talked about it, they often show the dick going in the pussy, the, the cum shot. The, the dick getting sucked. Please a lot tell of me, attention is please, on the penis. Please tell me what about that is heterosexual. Because if I'm heterosexual, I want to see two women. I don't need to do. What do I need mm. to do it for? Oh, time don't get just, me wrong. Just give me a minute. I, I agree with you on the first part about people's but, scale. But I think people envision themselves in porn. Yes, they can. But what I'm saying is, if you're... 
there's no need. I've met people that are woman or male body. Right. They don't spend any time talking about a pussy because they don't like it. They're like, well, she's cute. I mean, he banged her out, but I'm more about him. The fact that a lot of straight dudes spend so much time. On D. <laughs> want the, they want the larger penis. They they want you to beat it on their face. If you have a small penis, how do you imagine that's your penis? I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> if you're a white male. It's fantasy, though. It, I, I get it. But it's still fixated on the penis. Part of it is misogyny. I get it. But it's still, you spend more time talking about it than I do, and then women. But you say you're straight. Or part of it, and, and I'm being facetious. Um, I, I recognize people can have their own preferences. Um, just being silly. But it's just sexuality is so fluid in many different ways because it's that pleasure and sexuality can be separated. But a lot of people enjoy pleasure, but they wouldn't take a dude home. Right. But, again, you'll go to a glory hole. I'm 80-20, actually, with what you said. 80 agreeing that people, for the most part, are not all the way straight. The 20 is that I think we can be very brainwashed into not letting us do that. I think men specifically. I think, for the most part, we celebrate girls kissing a girl, and it's funny, and it's sexy, and whatever. I think men can be so terrified to even look the other way that sometimes they won't allow their brain to get there. I think about the men that I've wanted to tra- have anal play with that were just like, Oh my God, but I'm not, or just freaking out about it. Won't let their body relax. Just can't think about it because it's been forced into them. And I mean, that's a societal pressure, but Mm -hmm. I think that almost keeps you from it. I think maybe even I had a guy tell me once that was open about it. He was like, I remember when I was like a teenager, I wanted to know what other guys' bodies looked like in the locker room. I wanted to know if I looked um, similar, if I was bigger, smaller, I wanted to know. And then amongst looking like, I knew they were attractive and it made me think of women and like I would think about them and think about sex, but think about fucking women. That to me is still Kinsley scale shit. Mm -hmm. I look at hot girls sometimes and might want to go fuck my boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think though we've got to make sure that we're all having conversation about pleasure. Like, I think you've said something today that I haven't heard ever really pleasure and sexuality are separate. Cause it's very like that. Yeah. I really like that. Especially because the clip of you that went viral literally questioned both of those things. So you went viral for saying that you sucked your own dick Mm -hmm. and came in your mouth, which is ironic now that you say you don't like cum. It's a thing. Oh, you don't like other people's cum, but you're cool with yours because you know what you're eating and putting in your body. Now, there is a a porn star, and I'm so mad that I can't remember his name now, but that literally sucks his own dick off. Jack Trizzy. He was on Bobby. No, no, he's new. I'm talking about years ago, like when we first got on the spot, and I was like, ooh, wow. Because he was very... Very attractive, and that's why I like gay porn, because they'd be fine. Um, How can you do it? That's everybody's but question, yeah. right? Is it the bending over? Is it flexibility? It's, can anyone suck their dick, curve? by the way? By the way, can any man suck their own dick? Is that a thing that really all of y'all can do? No. Okay. It, it is anatomy and flexibility. <clears throat> so, um... Because I feel like anybody could just... Yeah, okay, so... Women can't... We can't eat our own pussy. You gotta have a big dick. Oh, listen. We can't eat our own pussy. You've seen someone eat their own pussy? Hold let me tell you something. Listen. You telling secrets oh, on a Jesus. microphone is so there, funny. There are two people that I've seen do it. There's this Asian lady, and the other person doesn't really do it, but they can put their face there. Um, I want to say their name is Stavana. Okay. And she she's a, a a black contortionist. It is. I know she can. And let me tell you, when she be teasing, I just be like, oh Jesus. Wow. So, um, and it's it it is a thing to watch because I'm like, I the things I could do to you while you're doing that. But to answer your question, so. This is the size of my phallus. It is two hands plus this. So literally, I can bend over. God damn. That, or I can put my legs over my head. What did you just say? Your dick is that big? <laughs> I saw a <laughs> video of it, but like, what? He I'm sorry. Said, you, he said it's you like this. You just put it up to your nipple. He, yeah, he just I said it like this. It's, it's, so. God. <laughs> no, you really just put that up to so, your nipple. So check this out. Look, when, he said when, that's when, when, when it's hard, it's, it's two hands. And I can lift my thumb, and my thumb is at the head of my penis. Oh, okay. So when I bend over, I can. Ah. Uh, or if I put my legs over my head, that's when it does. That's, that's when you get a deep throat your shit. Listen. Uh, <laughs> How is that? Are you a good dick sucker? Because you would know <laughs> since you felt it yourself. Like. How yeah, would you, you rate your dick sucking skills? This, <laughs> so listen, this, 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 I, 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 yo, listen. You know I was gonna take it here. Oh, These are the God. questions I did not that know. we wanted to know. And it's the funny thing: no one has ever asked me that. I don't know. So you have to understand this. Um, you just do what you want to feel. No, not. I ask people what they like. So no, no, no. I mean, like on yourself. On yourself. Oh, yeah, on myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So I'm. You I'm said you're ten out of ten for yourself. I'm experimenting. Huh? I'm like, oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? But when I give other people head, it's more of like, what do you like? 
even if it, whether it's male or female body, because if you don't like what I'm doing, I'm wasting my, my time and I want to mm. be intentional. And I want, I want you not to be triggered. I want you to be seen in anything that I do. Um, Cause even if I miss the mark and you say, I like this, this, and this, and I do those three things, but I missed the mark somewhere on these other things. You'd be like, they, they gave effort. I like that. Mm -hmm. You, everyone wants to feel that someone showed up for them. So, you know, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I can't say that I'm good. I don't know. How that often much. do you do it? Oh, for work a lot. Oh, like you record yourself doing it. Well, personally, I tell people when I'm in the mood, there it may be like every other month I'm in the mood to give myself head. And the, one of the running jokes is he doesn't need anybody to pleasure. I'm like, actually, I enjoy touch from other people. Right. Um, it's something that I recognized when I was younger. And I was like, oh, boom. Oh, I think I can get. And it was just like, oh, I did it. But it wasn't like. Your I mind think, was an advanced mind, sir. You know, I've always been this way because, uh, again, I grew up in a sex positive home where my mom had a girlfriend and a boyfriend. So my grandfather had four girlfriends and I knew them all. I knew my cousins who we, I knew everyone. So my life was just kind of different growing up. I never came out of the closet because why would I why would I do that? My mom. There was, was no closet. Yeah, my mom was like, be you. So. Um, wow. It, I, I did. Now, to friends, yes, I had to say, well, kind of not. I wore dresses in high school. So that's <laughs> so it's. Yeah, if you if you grew up with me, you knew I wasn't heterosexual. Like I wore dresses, I wore skirts. I, I did wore... you call? Because back then, did you call yourself bi? No, I just I just was. I knew I wasn't straight. Would so you say queer? I would say I would say bisexual at the time because pansexual was a new is a newer yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm like I'm, I like you know I'm bisexual. Um, but well, if, what do you find yourself sleeping with more, and has it changed? So this is the thing. Um, and this is just about social emotional intelligence how we're 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 um how we're socialized so for me to deal with a male body person you you're not going to be you can't be misogynistic the way you approach me is not mm -hmm. going to be i'm fucking you i'm dominating you it has to be the same way i would approach a woman i'm going to be gentle so i find myself dealing with women more because dudes are not always Mm. able to be themselves i don't deal with down low dudes like i'm not you're not about to make me right. we're not doing that so a lot of dudes are in that space and they be like nah like what the fuck are we doing you're not going to take me somewhere and make me feel away everybody that knows me knows i'm off the chain so if we're out you're gonna think they just think we just friends literally and a chain on your neck literally oh. there's a chain so on your neck. <laughs> i'm like i just don't like that type of energy so i end up dealing with women more mm -hmm. but i'm open it's just about the human showing up as a human now for the black men listening that are again maybe I'd hate to use the word confused, but in terms of sexuality or where they fall on the Kinsey scale, a lot of people feel as though women don't allow men often to come as themselves. And you say you enjoy black women. So I do, just before we get out of here, have to get into this conversation with you being this person from a child and knowing that you just come as you, what has your experience been with black women regarding your sexuality? And do they make you feel safe? Um, so, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Um, these are really good questions. And so not trying to make, make black women a monolith. Of um, course. But yes, I find that it is difficult, not for me to say who I am, but let's say one of us, we were trying to date. You have to be able to tell your friends, I'm dating the neck of trumpeter. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to look at my social media and be like, this this, this is who you with? That, they're going to be like, hold on, what kind of Trump? <laughs> so... There, there are different things that, uh, that goes into it. So if you're not secure as a woman to say, I do like them, that's an issue. But there are women that's like, that's gay. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what does that mean? So you care more about who I'm being honest about who I have sex with than how I treat you as a person. Because I'm like, the down low is real. Right, it is. Women be like, you're the first one. I ain't the first pansexual. Like, that's where we going. <laughs> I'm the first person that was honest to you. That's what we, that, well, how about that? So it can be difficult for black women to accept you. Mm. And so for me, dating is difficult in that sense of, there are a lot of unfortunately black women that would do everything to uphold the patriarchy and misogyny. Is it the sex work or the sexual orientation that you find more of a hindrance to dating? It's a little bit of both, but I'll say this, I've been called a sissy and a faggot more for how I conduct myself than who I have sex with. Wow. So if we were like, let's say I was trying to like court one of you all, I'm probably never going to touch you. I'm not going to make any any way to be sexual with you because I want to know you as a person. 
So one lady I was talking to, we spent like two months together. And she's like, are you, are you attracted to me? I was like, yeah, why, why, why do you think that? She was like, because you never push up on me. I was like, oh. So me getting to know you as a human is the issue. The fact that I respect your space, I ask permission to do these things to you. She's like, well, I'm used to men doing this. I'm like, oh, violating your consent and basically forcibly almost kind of assaulting you and you just kind of go with it. I'm like, that's not my vibe. The last two men I've dated, mm. I've come on this podcast and say like, why don't they want to have sex with me sooner? Da, 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 da. And it's so crazy because the conversation I had recently was like, Literally, like my friends and I are trying to dissect why, you know, th this summer I was dating someone like, how, how am I not fucking him? And I remember even you were like, maybe he's gay or maybe he just wants to be your friend, bro. And that was his exact answer. Like, I'm getting to know you. Like, I fuck everybody. He's he, like, hella fine. Like, of course you can get pussy. It's like, and I'm sitting here thinking almost in my brain, being a sex positive person who has a podcast like this. Oh, yeah, maybe he's just, like, the weaker one of us, too. Even but as a woman, I, I feel bad to say, and I, I admitted on this pod, too, um, Black Jesus. Like, he wanted to keep hanging out with me, but we weren't having sex because, you know, I was back entertaining this goddamn my ex. But I was so shocked that, okay, if we're not having sex, you still want to hang out with me? And I think it's because of that relationship with no. heterosexual men this, when you're dating. This is and crazy. I, I literally, get, but the I, waiting no, when no, you know no, you're but, attracted to I mean, but, we, but, we, had a, we, we fucked on the first night. No, so I, I it get was, that. It was surprising to me that, like, but, he still wanted to hang out go, even though it, we weren't having sex This anymore. goes back to my original point, yeah. though, about being seen as a human. Yeah. So even though you want it, you, I know what you all look like. I know what you're accustomed to. So it's like as a, as a guy that understands themselves, we're like, we actually want to know who you it's are. It's the self-control, I think, that... <clears throat> We, or at least for one point for myself, I thought, I didn't realize self-control meant that he actually had interest. I was just like, oh, he's not that into me if he can't contain himself. Do you know the more that we're into you, it is, so I went on a date today and I have been talking to this person. I'm telling my damn business. God damn. <laughs> I've Welcome been, to Horrible Decisions. It's all good. <laughs> um, and I'm poly, so all my, my lovers at one point will watch this. Um, so I always have to to let them know what's going on because I'm like, I want to tell you first. But I went on a date today, and I've known the person for about maybe a year and a half. And every time we've met, we've been in sex positive space. We've been in places where we could have literally had sex right then and there. Never had sex. We've had great conversation. And so today I, I told her, I was like, you know, I like you. She's like, I like you too. And I was like, well, the, the reason I like her more is because we've never had sex. I'm a sex worker. I'm going to have sex. I, I know when I'm going to have sex and who I'm going to be having sex with, how many times, how many scenes we're going to shoot. So I'm not worried about that. But when I can actually treat you as a human and we get to know each other, that means I actually like you. Because if sex is the only thing you yeah. can offer me, when I'm not horny, what are we doing? I cannot what are we believe doing? what you just said is what I've just learned the last six months of my life. I'm almost 32 years old. I mean, the keeping... The, I always associated men wanting me and their passion for me with sex yeah not that i wasn't getting i've i've had a lot of boyfriends and and men want to court me but it was still associated with sex but in this moment like it's crazy because i did not know that i would even say until three weeks ago just thinking that liking me this much was because we haven't had sex yet because now i got to push past that point of my interest is there because at first when he said something like this to me i thought Oh, so basically you're scared to fuck me because you're not going to like me after that? But it wasn't that. It was that you're so used to fucking girls by the third date or whatever that you kind of just don't get to this point that we're at now. When the fuck are you talking about family? You know what I mean? Or, or my goals or life shit. When our first date's drinks, the second date's drinks, and by the third one, we're ready to fuck. Like, now we're really building. And I think that men that for themselves want more, because at the end of the day, most men that I've met, even my homeboys, do want a wifey type of girl at the end of the day. They want one woman that they feel more connected to rather than the eight girls they're currently fucking. They just haven't met them yet. But maybe they have. They just fucked them too early, and now it kind of feels like the chase is done. For me, it's not about that. If I have interest, I have interest. But if you have a growth mindset, if you're intelligent, your body is going to change. Mm -hmm. Whatever size you are right now, we could be dating tomorrow. You can gain 100 pounds. So if I don't like you, mm -hmm. and the only interest I have is in your body, what, why am I wasting my time? And keep in mind, too, that we're thinking our bodies are the prize. Mm -hmm. So, so many times when we're online, we're posting the bikini pics and doing things like that, ready to reel them in without making sure that we've got intellectual conversation. Do you know how many women are so... My homegirls have made fun of me for years 
for things that I see now are soft girl life and like a, a trend on Twitter. I've had people say that I was, what is it when you're like trying to like, um, not the male gaze, but it's like, there's a term that people have been using about like trying to basically, you're talking for the guys. What is that one? Oh, mansplaining. Um, not mansplaining. No, 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 no. Pick me. You're a pick me. Oh, because I would say things about cooking or doing little things and I would be really confused about the pick me comment. But it's because it wasn't cool to be softer or to like show men that attitude. And maybe it was like my relationship with my dad. So I haven't had to have a guard up, whereas a lot of my friends didn't have that luxury. But I do realize today that like it's just becoming acceptable for women to be like that. And I hope what happens for men is that men that do want those deeper connections with women they take that approach. Hey, maybe even when she's asking for dick, let me hold it back a little bit because I can see something with this girl, which men probably aren't doing because it, it, it takes it's both. a lot more pressure for a dude not to want to fuck you. Oh, what are you gay? That's the first thing I'm thinking. I said it on this podcast. Or or you got an outbreak or it's so, little. So, and, <laughs> and the funny thing oh, is- Oh, it's like, little, I thought for sure. You all both answered the question that you just asked me. Yeah, no. And that has been my experience. I'm like, but if I like you, we can chill, even if we have sex, like you said with Black Jesus. We can, I, can, I can give you that. Well, it's, but. and to be fair, there there is an unlearning, unfortunately, yes, that is. has taken place with us. And I think I'm so grateful for this show because even the things that I experience, I let everyone know I've only been with black men, and so my friends have said, "Girl, how you be finding the, how you be finding these men that be letting you do all this?" And I'm like, "They're probably the same men that you do. You just don't make them feel safe. You don't allow mm -hmm. them. They don't trust you." with the things that they're really into. And a lot of black men will literally come to me. I, I used to, oh my God, I used to call myself the Buddha hole whisperer at one time. Like <laughs> all these men, like let me know the things they were into and they were like, you're the only girl that knows this. You're the only, and- well, Part of it is setting the container. Um, and the other thing is, there's language that you can use that will let men know I'm not safe here. Mm, can you give some examples of what those things could be? Just before we get out of here, because any, any woman listening, that really may be wanting to dive deeper into kink or let let you know men know that she's open and not judgmental what are things that are normally said by women that make you not feel safe with their with their views on sexuality some of it, so i'll give you some actions so um i'll say hey you know wheezy today i was really emotional and i was sad and i just felt like i wasn't strong enough to do this if you don't stop being a punk ass yeah you mm. weak ass man up why are you crying Things like that. So when I'm trying to show you the full breadth of my humanness and you call it gay, soft, weak, punk, pussy. And uh -huh. it's funny that the words that we use to describe weakness are the strong. Look, you know how strong the pussy is? <laughs> pussy right. strong. But we use words about women to describe weakness. So anytime that you describe me being emotional and equate that to a Femininity, feminine trait, yeah. you're telling me I'm not safe to show you that I'm a human. Wow. Um, anytime we're watching TV, like that faggot ass. You're like, what? Anytime a dude does anything and your comment is negative about their mannerisms not being strong, not mm. being masculine. If it's a so man cries, that that's my friend. If yep. a man cries in front of you, the best thing you can do is hold him and say thank you. Thank you for showing me that side of you. You know how safe that would make, make a person feel? Mm -hmm. Right now, if we were on a date and you just burst out in tears, if we don't know each other that way, you may think I'm going to judge you. But if I show you I'm here with you and I'm just going to hold space, people are like, but damn. I can be myself in front of them. They're not going to act weird. Do you think if people, specifically women, aren't using terms like the F word or like calling someone a bitch or a punk and they say things like, I want a man who's going to be this, this, that. And they're like trying to maybe show you how they, or they'll even say it's they the want someone thing. masculine. I think that's the, the same. same thing. It is the I same thing. The same. Yeah. Because I've seen that a lot too, where girls are overdoing this manly man they want. It's like, girl. My friend does listen, that often. My she best calls me all the time. And he know and how to like, hang shit up on the walls. So my, what's manly? My Listen. friend does that often. She'll go out with, with guys a lot. And the first thing she tells me is, girl, I think I don't think he's all the way straight. And I'd be like, well, why? And she would just be like, his mannerisms. But like, and is, it would be like he, the slightest even of if they're things. Not, just like, even if they're not, if they treat you, Rihanna said it, make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. Mm -hmm. If somebody does that to you and they're honest about who they are, why do you care? What What, what is keeping you from being happy? Yes. So... If we're so, if let's say even though I'm poly, I can enter into a monogamous relationship. So yeah, I'm pansexual. But let's say I'm dating Mandy, and she's like, I'm I'm monogamous. Don't ain't nobody else. So if we're monogamous. That means I'm no longer having sex with a dude. There's no competition. It's just you. So then, what is your issue? I I actually think though, what you're saying 
Polly for me, most people are not able to make you feel like the only girl in the world. I have a very close friend who's in a poly relationship where they feel like that person is fluctuating so much on the Kinsey scale that they're not being catered towards. It's like, hey, one day my partner just may want a woman more, may want a man more. And it's like I get left out. And I've had the experience that with mm. Polly, a lot of people don't know how to manage that. I think you're speaking from a place of maturity and experience. And I don't know how long you've been Polly, but just your age alone shows me you've What's lived... the difference between being Polly and having multiple friends? A lot. Mm. I, so this is my question. Do you do you love your, your platonic friends? Yes. Do you hang out with your platonic friends? Not as much as my partner. Okay, well, that's your own personal boundary. I it's actually, not a personal boundary. Well, why don't I you? have the... I don't have time to sexually, I, I would say, like, please or even gratify all 20 of my friends. Right? But, like, but how that's, much. But, but that's not the basis of almost any serious relationship. It's not just sex. But I'm saying but, just that alone. But, but I'm just saying, though. But the if, main difference between my platonic friends is I don't fuck them. Yes, but you have the capacity to love them, though, right? I do, but so. I can't even show up for some of them motherfuckers all the time. Th but that, Think about how but, hard it is to but, catch up with a friend for lunch. But that's fine, though. So in my life, because of what I do for work, I'm literally, I'm not going to be home. I'm, I'm traveling now. I'll probably be home 15 days this month, and then I'm going to be out. Mm. So even if I we live together, I still need time alone. It's not about another person. Sometimes we're so jealous of somebody's time. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you doing with your time? That this wasn't, this was actually so be, a conversation. Yes no, As someone has been actively I, I monogamous, agree. I don't necessarily I think you. that that's the case i'm not a jealous person but i also am I, I need more accessibility to time i would say than i could share with if you had four girlfriends but even if i was monogamous so well for me i pick partners based on certain things uh -huh. even if we're monogamous you have to understand 100 percent of my time i own I'll, i can give you 40 percent of it I still have to work, right? You still got a life. Of course. So outside of us relating, we still have lives. So if your life is not busy and full, it's going to be hard for us to deal with each other. Because even if it's not another person, I got to practice. I got to train. I got to travel. Honestly. So it's, it's life is life and for me. I'm almost too busy to date someone polyamorous. Right now I'm dating someone on a different coast and we're like matching calendars to figure out what time works between whose work. How the fuck could he have time for it? It's that? crazy. I, I I'm, feel doing, like, I'm doing I feel that, like, with, I'm doing now, that now granted, with one person. With, if there was another person nearby him to maybe fill up the days, sure. But I'll tell you right now that if I was coming to L.A. for 48 hours and he had a date tomorrow, that wouldn't be okay. I'll be honest. Outside, but that's a boundary you walk in. You can but, you can, but you can But also, that. outside of sexual, this conversation, I feel like then my, my last relationship was a poly relationship. And he had a problem with all of my partners. And when I say partners... I still gave a lot of time to my friends. Yeah. So every Sunday I'm at Asante's watching this. I'm flying to Atlanta for Crystal, especially when she was going she she was going through chemo at one point. Yeah. And I was making sure I'm, I got to go to Atlanta for this. Medina comes up where I fly to support her. Like, And that was one actually question that he had. He felt like confused as to how I could show up for all these other people. And I had to let him know these people are in my life. You have to accept the time that I give them. I will give you the time that I can give you. But these people, even though we're in a relationship, that doesn't change. And the fact that a lot of them don't live here was one thing. He got a lot of my time, but we even argued sometimes because I always make time for my friends. So I would invite him out a lot of times and I'd be with my friends because I still have to give them time and and love and be attentive to their needs the same way I am for yours. So you actually explaining this makes me feel like going into my next relationship, not to say that Polly always has to be sexual. I remember we had King Noir on here and he talked about like, well, I'm not gonna like everything you like. So I have to allow space for you to be able to do other things with other people. That was a great To enjoy those things. That he had. And, and yeah, so, it's not even about sex. That's it's really about giving you space is. to you live your life. You two are two very two different daters than I am. And there's nothing wrong with either. I expect when my friends get in a relationship, they have less time for me and I have no issue with that. Oh yeah, nah. but not see, but, a fucking problem. But, but the thing is, though, if because you want to, it, it, but I, and I, I hear my you end on goal that. is children. So uh. when I find a partner that I'm interested in, and I'm seeing it go there, when I have kids, I, I, I'm really not gonna be spread thin. Like being a mom is something I wanted before any other career passion. So when I'm starting to hmm. court and date a partner that I'm I, that I'm falling for, those relationships do dwindle. I make time for them. Don't get me wrong. But like, I ain't gonna be 
you just said every Sunday with Asante, right? I have a homegirl every Friday I'm out to dinner with. That was just our thing in LA. That's actually gone now because the dude that I'm dating is free now on these weekends, right? Whereas the weeks are busy. So she expects that to be gone because I need to nurture that for the future I want. I, I don't disagree with that, but I will say this. The reason why I invest time in the people that I love, regardless of the, our type of relationship is, if my partner dies, if my partner and I break up, you you have to hold space for the people that you just love. Agreed. Because so, a lot of people let their friends go, which is really yes. fucked up. A lot of people do. But I definitely prioritize. Like my if you, parents If are you first, won't let then, your friends go for your relationship and your, your own personal success, don't do it for a person. Mm-hmm. So if you're not willing to give up time for your own success, I put time into practice in Trump because I want to be successful. So that's my first relationship to self. If I can't give me that, I don't have time for nobody else. Mm-hmm. But for me... And I think the happy medium is like what y'all both do, including the trumpet with them. I try to. And then you letting him come out with friends. Oh, If you absolutely. don't integrate your partner with your friendships, if you're actually going to give that much time, because there's one well, thing... Well, no, I left it up to him because I'm not going to lie. I'm a person. I don't want to be involved with any of my friends and their partners facts they i don't, don't we don't have to i don't want that person it. to be my friend so i always let it up to him hey if you want to see me i'm out with this person right now but i never like bombarded him with hanging with my friends but if he wanted to see me just know i'm showing up for someone else right now you're more than welcome to join us for me but, yeah, i like I, that that's that really was, that's healthy that's that's what i did with him because it's, it wasn't like i'm gonna invite people out i'm out if you really want to see me come join but like i'm with that. this i also want right to say now. i don't mean giving a partner like five days a week of my time that's something i actually can't just afford to give right now but if I really do have, like right now I'm here in New York for five days. If I was seeing someone for five days in New York, as many friends as I need to see, if I was dating someone, I might have to catch those homegirls on the next trip to prioritize the relationship that, again, I have an end goal with a relationship for me right now. Like motherhood, I'm 32 years old, as Mandy just told me uh, a few hours ago. <laughs> I'm 31 for another three weeks. But like, no, like my clock is ticking, so it's like, I'm a lot more intentional. And my bitch has been my bitches forever, yo. Like, we've been in the clubs forever. We've been on trips forever. I, Much like you, we internationally trip with our friends. You know what I mean? And sometimes I, I have those waves with them that I appreciate that they understand, too. Because I kind of need that right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, when I have more free time and I'm single as shit, hell yeah, bitch, you got me in Italy for four weeks so we could trick off on a boat. But I do think <laughs> in this minute, not we was just talking about you. Oh, yeah, because we about to go. <laughs> we were talking friends. about making time for friends, except for you. And I said, Asante's <laughs> will be every Sunday. We about to go get drinks. This, anyway. This is, this this is, is by the way, fun- my friend and my, my ex was jealous of in my poly relationships. She and I do didn't it know every episode. Poly. I didn't know I was poly until now, but I'm poly with my friendships. And it's crazy because I yeah, love them. It's not and, and I let, and it, I let them know my friends. Many got come, a family tree. Oh, yeah. My, my friends come before my partners. My career comes before my partners. Yeah. And that is something that they have to accept when they come into my life. And I tell so, people the same thing because it love don't pay bills. It sure don't. <laughs> the I, trumpet do. Listen, I tell my partners, listen, <laughs> if I have to work, the one thing I don't want you to don't, don't complain about me working. You can complain about me not giving, not being attentive, not being intentional, a lot of things. I have to work. I have goals. My life you goals are because my, my life goals are more I see important. Them videos, you 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 put out some content, sir. My life goals are very important. Because I love it, that it affords me the the luxury and the things that I do enjoy. I yeah. love that. I love that. Well, for anyone listening, for anyone who enjoyed you, by the way, the, the conversation today, great. Hope that you guys took a lot from it. They were but like, it, y'all could have talked way but, more about. But, but for those that want to <laughs> support you, follow you on OnlyFans or support any of your links. Where can they where can they follow and support so, you? So uh, it's Naked Trumpeter on Twitter, Instagram, and FetLife. Um, for OnlyFans, it's Naked Trumpeter XXX and Black on Black Love XXX. Great By the way, name. all of those will be in the description of this episode. We truly, truly, truly hope that you enjoyed this episode because, baby, this is how we wrapping up Black History Month, honey. Um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you check out our patreon that's patreon.com backslash horrible decisions you'll get to see some great bts from our taping today here at wtf media y'all thank y'all for tuning in yet again this has been another episode of horrible decisions Bye.